Our first lesson is from the prophet Jeremiah. God, you enticed me, and I was taken in. You were too strong for me, and you prevailed. Now I'm laughed at all the time. Everyone mocks me. Every time I open my mouth, I cry out and say violence and destruction. God's word has brought me nothing but insult and injury constantly. I thought, I'll forget the Almighty. I'll no longer speak in God's name. But there's an intense fire in my heart, trapped in my bones. I'm drained trying to contain it. I'm unable to do it. I hear many whispering, panic lurks everywhere. Proclaim, yes, let's proclaim it ourselves. All my friends are waiting for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed. Then we'll prevail against him and get our revenge on him. But God is with me like a strong defender. Therefore, my oppressors will stumble and not prevail. They will be disgraced by their own failures. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. The creator of heavenly forces tests the righteous and discerns the heart and mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Holy One, praise God, who has rescued the needy from the clutches of evildoers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. You turn our morning into dancing. You turn our darkness into light. We praise you, Eternal One, for you give us a hand up when others try to pull us down. When we are wounded and crying for help, you make us whole. You deliver us from dead places and breathe new life into us. When we feel imprisoned, you set us free. We praise you, our Deliverer, and worship you with thankful hearts. You turn our mourning into dancing. You turn our darkness into light. Your anger, O God, has a short shelf life, but your loving kindness lasts forever. Weeping may be our constant companion during dark times, but your joy breaks through like morning with light and life. During peaceful times, we feel strong as mountains, but when your presence is hard to find, we quickly fall to pieces. We cry and plead, saying, Will God be merciful? Will we perish? Will we survive this and live to praise God another day? You turn our mourning into dancing. You turn our darkness into light. When darkness envelops our lives, let us always remember that you, O oh God, are merciful and will deliver us. You turn our funeral dirges into dancing songs. You throw off our grave clothes and dress us in our Sunday best. Therefore, we will give thanks to you and be filled with joy. We will not remain silent bystanders but will sing your praises forever and ever. You turn our mourning into dancing. You turn our darkness into light. Our second lesson is from Romans. So what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Or didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? This is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new territory of grace, a new life in a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. When we were raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father, so that we can see where we are going in our new grace-sovereign country. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to that sin-miserable life, no longer captive to sin's demands. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, 
It was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him. But alive, he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue, and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. You're familiar with the command to the ancients, do not murder. I'm telling you that anyone who is so much as angry with a brother or sister is guilty of murder. Carelessly call a brother idiot and you just might find yourself hauled into court. Thoughtlessly yell stupid at a sister and you're on the brink of hellfire. The simple moral fact is that words kill. This is how I want you to conduct yourselves in these matters. If you enter your place of worship and are about to make an offering, you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you. Abandon your offering. Leave immediately. Go to this friend and make things right. Then, and only then, come back and work things out with God. Or say you're out on the street and an old enemy accosts you. Don't lose a minute. Make the first move. Make things right with him. After all, if you leave the first move to him, knowing his track record, you're likely to end up in court, maybe even in jail. If that happens, you won't get out without a stiff fine. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> 